Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and we're live November 1st, 2013, and we're taking your calls from around the world. And tonight's show, we're going to be speaking with people who claim they have the power to summon UFOs, and they learned it from a man named Mr. Robert Bingham right there in Los Angeles, California. And we're going to speak with Dr. J.N.D. Elias, who was on location and interviewed for Third Phase of Moon. These two special guests that we're going to have on tonight. Dr. J, welcome to Third Phase. Uh, of course. Like, how you doing? Hey, doing pretty good. Uh, tell me about the subject matter tonight and the people that you interviewed on location there in Los Angeles and their claims that they could summon UFOs. I, we did the special. We released it right here on Third Phase of Moon, and there was some activity right there on location while you were there. There absolutely was. We were going through Fosto Threads' steps at the time, I, and within 15 minutes of the time, we, we showing up there, just starting the interview, him playing with his tripod, and I said, let's get some B-roll shots of you filming on your, setting up your camera. And he says, there's something there. You know, he's look, looking up at the sky, and I figured it was just a reenactment, so I kept rolling. He goes, no, there's something there, look. And sure enough, there were two objects in the sky, you know, glittering and glistening, two silver spheres and it was a clear blue sky not a cloud in the sky there was nothing in it beforehand i it just appeared out of nowhere and sure enough uh, that was just one of the anomalies that we've all seen under robert bingham absolutely incredible we're going to be uh, joining right here on third phase moon live mr fausto perez the man that was right there that did this for third phase of moon and mr dr jandy elias on location welcome to the show fausto perez Hey Blake, how you doing? Hey, uh, hey, Dr. J. Andy. Yeah. How are you, Fosto? Good. Uh, actually, it was funny when uh, remember when we were doing the B-roll shots while you were talking to my dad for a little bit. Uh huh. Exactly where the UFO showed up uh, for three times in a row, there was a cloud that kept uh, forming and disappearing, forming and disappearing. I counted three times while I was looking at it, and that same spot was where the two orbs showed up. And on top of the two orbs just showing up, there was, uh, what is it, a falcon that kept coming every single time you were there? Yeah. And literally just circled? Yeah, and then shortly after the UFOs, remember the the chopper that kept flying over the area that kept making us have to stop recording because it, it would have uh, fly Blake, over. But... Blake, let me throw in that Dan Romanek had some photographs when we interviewed him of a helicopter, a black helicopter that came to his house every time a... UFOs showed up, and underneath is a giant camera. Like, you could tell it's got a telescopic lens. It's clearly not a gun. Well, when Foster sent the picture saying there's a helicopter over my house, they can snap a picture of it, send it. It looked just like Romanex. It makes you want to think, are they tracking them? Wow, was the, was the Black Op helicopters tracking this uh, UFO phenomenon and the UFO summoners themselves? A lot of activity around uh, Mr. Romanek and Mr. Perez, and we're going to be speaking hopefully soon with uh, Jim Martin, also summoner right there in L.A. that learned this from Robert Bingham. And so, also, Perez, tell me, when and where did you first meet Robert Bingham, and how did you become aware of uh, what he claimed he could do? Well, first I became aware through Third Phase of Moon. Um, I had seen a video of uh, mass sighting in... Uh, in uh, Mexico City where it was hundreds of orbs and a bunch of people recorded the same thing. Then I saw uh, your video on Third Phase of the Moon about Robert Venom where the UFO he was recording looked the same to those. So it caught my eye and I heard that he was doing an event in MacArthur Park which was only around 20 minutes from where I live. So uh, as soon as I saw, the, I saw the location and date for the event, I showed up and when I was there, I, I saw the same thing I saw on video and just was astonished by it and then decided to try this for myself when I heard uh, Robert Bingham's method to summon him. Well, let me ask you, you're going to be doing these events yourself now. Do you have any planned dates that you want to uh, tell our listeners and viewers right here on Third Phase of Moon when and where? Yes, I'm, I'm hoping that if I, if I can get the time available by next week, I want to do an event on either Saturday or Sunday in uh, Hollydale Park, the park close to my city in Southgate, California. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be on Saturday or Sunday yet, but I'll keep you guys posted so you can know. I also will post the event on my Facebook link 
uh, Facebook slash UFO summoning. Were you going to have to let us know the exact date so we could uh, let the viewers and listeners know when to show up right there in L.A.? Are you planning on inviting Robert Bingham and uh, Jim Martin in there? When it, if you have three UFO summoners in the same spot, there's bound to be some, uh, you know, hopefully incredible activity going on. Oh, I definitely am. I've uh, been talking to Jim Martin, and I asked him if he would be interested in doing a double summoning. He said he would. And I'm also interested in inviting Robert Bingham. I'm hoping that he'll come out, too. If I can get all three of us, that'll be amazing. I can just imagine what the results will be for the crowd. Well, Dr. J, you were, uh, you know, you filmed on location pretty much all three events, uh, Mr. Bingham, Fausto Perez, and Jim Martin, and uh, all this activity. What do you have to say walking away from all this and how it's kind of spreading and the knowledge is getting out there? I got a few things to say. First, let me correct you. You mentioned three of the summers. I actually went out and formed a fourth one. The name is Dr. Stephen Greer. And the message that the method that he uses for Close Encounter 5, uh, which is human-initiated alien contact, is the same method that Fosto is using. It's the same method that Robert Bingham is using. It's the same method that uh, everybody's using, Jim Martin. And that's what it basically comes down to is remote viewing and meditating. And Fosto can go into more details. But, yes, I've covered several of Robert's events dating back a year and a half, and couple of Stephen Greer's events, Fosto and Jim Martin, and all but Jim Martin, because we didn't have time and he didn't actually practice summoning in front of me that day, I saw anomalous activity. Uh, Fausto, tell me, what, are they communicating back to you, or, or do they have any uh, message for you, or are they, is there, what is their you know, message? The uh, message from the UFOs? Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure from what I've been doing is when I summon them, I, I ask them for messages, I ask them to help me advance a higher level of consciousness. Um, and what that's been helping me to do is just, uh, I've, uh, been able to heal my body. I've gotten rid of an ulcer that I've had, scars have virtually disappeared that should have been there for the rest of my life. And the newest thing, which I just, uh, recorded is I've been working on telekinesis. I'm going to upload a video of that soon to YouTube to show uh, the people what I'm talking about. Uh, the message that I've said from my perspective, from what I've seen, is they're just trying to help us advance, to become better, to open our minds and be able to understand more of what we're of this world that we're in. Dr. J, you know as well as I, uh, you know, the comments continuously come in and the summoning events and a lot of the people claim that you better be watch, watching out what you're summoning. Some people claim that they could be demonic in nature. What do you think about the, you know, the theories behind that, Dr. J? I know a lot of people have an opinion on it. A lot of people sure do. I, Sir Faison Moon is contacted regularly about that, uh, people suggesting that, hey, you guys are filming fallen angels or you're showing fallen angels or demonic stuff. And really what I have to say is there's good and bad in all of this universe going all the way down from uh, us to theology to every myth in, myth in history of every culture and the Bible. I think there's a lot of probably extraterrestrials that visit Earth for their own agenda. Most probably visit for their own agenda. Some probably visit with a good agenda, something to enhance us or help us. And I'm pretty sure there are some out there that are coming for evil agendas, and maybe those are the ones that are perceived as the fallen angels. Uh, Fausto, any um, hesitation on your part on what these things may be? Um, like, uh, one thing I don't really tell a lot of people is my dad has helped a lot of people get rid of demons. He has a gift, which Mr. which Dr. J. Andy Elias experienced um on um, the day he came to do my documentary, I don't know if you would like to expand on that, but my dad helps people with uh, problems they have. And through this experience of living with him, helping people this way, I've uh, I've seen demons. I've battled with them myself. I've removed one from my cousin and captured pictures of it. And throughout my life as I was growing up, I would be able, I would wake up paralyzed and they would, uh, they would show themselves. My door in my room constantly used to open and close in front of my eyes. 
But until I started summoning, I used, I would always say before I summon, uh, my father, God of it, your will, let me see uh, your beings in the sky today. And through through that, I asked them to keep any bad uh, energy away. And since that, my door has stopped opening and closing, and all the demonic activity has been has stopped, has ceased to exist that I have known for all my life. So I think it's something good because I through this I've learned how to to test things to see if they're demons, to see if they're from God and the way that I've tested them. They haven't shown themselves to be any demonic force, but I do believe there are UFOs out there that are from demonic, that are from a, a negative nature. But from what I've seen, from the ones that I'm summoning, I haven't seen anything bad from them. Well, everybody's standing by. We're taking calls. If anybody wants to report a UFO sighting or uh, chime in on what the conversation is going on tonight, you can call us at 347-934-0378. We're live on Third Phase of Moon, and we're going to a, a caller that's in from area code 212. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Hey, Blake. Hey, did you ask these guys uh, if there's a lot of air traffic in in L.A., that they there might be UFO sightings that people will never see just because there's so much air traffic there? If these guys are both in L.A., ask them if that's the case. Well, I guess that's for uh, Fausto and Mr. Dr. J. D. Elias. With all the air traffic over there, is it sometimes hard to, you know, track what a UFO is and what these aircraft are? My, I would say it's actually a lot harder for for exact that same reason because there's so many objects in the sky, and because there's a, continuously things flying, people don't give a second look, you know, and because of that, it's very I, probable, highly probable that we're clearly misidentifying uh, extraterrestrial craft or what could be secret military craft and believing that it's just an ordinary jet or plane or whatever it be. Hey, that's interesting. Is, is Fausto, what's your experience? You're also in Los Angeles, Fausto. You, what do you find with all the air traffic? Is, is um, has, What I've found with air traffic is it makes it easier for me to identify a difference between a UFO and a government craft. I've seen pretty crazy things that I believe were government drones like just around last week, I was dropping my cousin off at her house, and I saw a bright light, and with a blinking light in front of it, just shoots straight down towards the earth, and all of a sudden go parallel to the ground. But the UFO that I have witnessed wouldn't move that way. What I believe that object was a, I believe it was a government craft. And just the other day, I was coming home from a, a night of eating with my friends, and I saw a jet hovering over her house, staying completely still for around five minutes until I try to, until I. Um, I don't know if it bothered me looking at it or something, but it's, after five minutes of looking at it, they still it just flew right off. It was extremely silent, too, which was odd because I ne- I've never seen a jet in, in person, but I don't know if it make a lot of noise or not, but that thing was the quietest thing I've ever seen. It was a perfect that, shape man, of like an F-17. Hey, Dr. J. Fausto, you guys are both in Los Angeles because I'm not from L.A. I'm coming back east. You guys are both in Los Angeles then. What happened out of the yes. airport today? I don't know. Obviously, there was a shooting, uh, but let me tell you what I do know. I live in the San Fernando Valley, and I had to come to Ontario where I'm at right now. Right before I left the San Fernando Valley, the Los Angeles Flyaway, which is a bus that takes people to the LAX every 15 minutes during 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and every 30 minutes the other 24 hours, or the other, what is it, 16, 18 hours of the day. Or six. Point being is the Flyaway was surrounded with cones to, not, to allow no entry, no exit, full of police, bomb-sniffing dogs, and the works. Now in Ontario, which is the sister airport of LAX, and there is heightened security going on. And I'm actually in a hotel right by the airport, and we have a massive blackout. The only thing that's the light right now is the airport itself. And uh, like I said, I don't know if this thing is linked to, but clearly this has disrupted everything today. Wow, so we're having uh, breaking news out of uh, Ontario, California. Dr. J's on location. There's a blackout going on. And is the airport closed down right now? No, I still hear planes taking off. Actually, I don't see any taking off. I hear them coming in, and I see them coming in, and they're the only lights that I see are the airport. But in every direction, all even the tall hotel buildings I could see, I don't know, I would have to stay a couple miles away. It's just dark in every direction. A little eerie. Reminds me I of that. I can imagine. Well, we are taking more calls 
right here at Third Phase Moon Live. And if you have any questions, you want to chime in on the blackout, what's going on over there, or UFO sightings, you can call into 347-934-0378. Now we're going to go to our next caller, Airy Code 584-585. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Hey, Blake, uh, Dr. Jay Foster, this is Jim Martin. How are you guys? Good, Jim. We're well, uh, doing good. Welcome uh, to the roundtable tonight on Third Phase of Moon. Jim Martin is our special guest tonight. He also has learned how to summon UFOs from Mr. Robert Bingham as well as Mr. Fausto Perez right here on Third Phase Moon. Welcome to the show, Jim. Thanks for having me. I've been uh, really enjoying uh, the show so far. Sorry for being late. Hey, no problem. Well, let's get straight to it. Tell me about your first uh, meeting with Robert Bingham and uh, how did you find out about him and did he impress on your uh, first general meeting with the, with the man? Um, I just pretty similar uh, to Fosto. I, I heard about Robert Bingham through a, a third phase of moon episode. And um, I attended his um, event at Park Plaza hotel on July 13th. Um, and it was a, it was a pretty good event. I arrived there um, shortly after the summons and, um, and honestly, the, the turnout that day was, was, was decent, but it was so high in the sky that I honestly left the event um, somewhat unconvinced. And um, it wasn't until I got home later that day that a lot changed for me. Really about 20 minutes after coming back to Orange County, I was just about an hour away from the event. I was sitting on my porch, and a big orb appeared right above my apartment. And I managed to capture a bunch of footage of it, and and it really turned out, but it was interesting. I went to the event. I really did not see anything that really turned me, and then I went home, had this big experience, and then I contacted Robert, and the rest is history. So that's my initiation with him, basically. Wow. We, we have uh, Fausto Perez also claiming to summon UFOs and Mr. Martin. I want you guys to uh, collaborate right now here live. If you could figure out what day – and time that you guys could both get together and do this for uh, the public. Yeah, I was wondering if you were uh, available sometime next week if you wanted to do a summoning or next weekend. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely. I'd love to come out to uh, to your event that, or the uh, of uh, what you talked about. That sounds great. Right. Have you uh, contacted the ninth, tenth? Um, what do you think? Should we do Sunday or Saturday? I say um, Sunday because more people are meditating that day for church, and you would probably have even better odds. That's what I was so thinking. So is this going to be uh, November, Sunday. 10th. November 10th, Sunday? All right. That sounds good for me. What cool. do you think, Jim? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, that sounds good, uh, tentatively, for sure. All right. You could uh, contact Robert. I'll contact him soon see if he wants to come out on Sunday the uh, 10th for, to help us summon that day. Okay. Cool. So uh, and Bob, 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 I was wanting uh, you to tell so your message what you're saying about spreading this, Fosto, real quick. Oh, yeah. Um, for people who want to come out, what I want to do is I want to teach as many people as I can. If you come to the event this Come up and ask me, and I'll give you every detail that I know that I I used to summon, and I'll try to explain it as best as I can, so you can try it yourself. And what I want to do is teach everyone that I can. Hopefully, have this go viral, and hopefully, in a year's or two or three years' time, have events all around the world where people are having their own summoning events, so anyone can go nearby to a location near them to see a UFO and open their minds to the reality of this world. Okay, now let's get the location right for everybody. Third Phase of Moon is going to be on top of this. We're going to cover the whole event. We're going to have our camera crews down on the ground, and we're going to have our eyes on the sky. Exactly where on November 10th, Sunday, in the California region? Go ahead. It's going to be in a park called Hollydale Park. It has a lot of space, so there's a lot of room for as many people as can show up. It's in Southgate, California. It's uh, by a riverbank, the river, the LA Riverbed. Well, what we will do in the in, in this uh, in this conversation and this radio show, we're going to be posting this on Third Phase Moon, and we're going to give the exact coordinates, times, and uh, the date for everybody to show up. Now, let's get to the UFOs themselves, because a lot of these are 
similar in us in you know the visual visual captures these are orbs Fausto Perez is getting kind of like metallic imagery as well and it's like gleaming in the sun what do you think these are Jim are they uh, these or the orb the foe is it the more uh, metallic version I'm sorry Blake I missed that last part I bad connection here okay basically the UFO, the types of UFOs that you've been around through your summoning, are they basically in a metallic form or are they orbish? What, what's the most common UFO formation that you come across? Well, myself personally, I mean, I, I've only been, I, I'm a very, I'm a summoner with training wheels. I mean, I've been doing this for eight weeks, so my observations are going to be limited to a very short amount of time. Um, but most of the time it, it will be orbs or um I'm, I'm starting to see more variation. Um, I mean, we, sh- we did some shooting with Robert uh, at t- Tuesday this past week, and we had a really great turnout, and it was the first um, kind of craft I'd ever captured on film. So that was the first real variation I'd seen. I mean, I, I was especially interested to ask Bosco, um, what does he see, and, and does he see much variation? Um, if you don't mind, I'd love, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Fausto. Go ahead, Fausto. Sorry about I've that. Seen, Go uh, ahead. But I've seen uh, quite a couple of times. The one that intrigued me the most, it was the third UFO I ever saw when I started summoning. It was like, it looked like a sheet. I, I call it as a joke, the um, metallic flying, magic flying carpet. But it literally looked like a sheet that was just waving through the air and went around three circles around the house and then just zoomed off. So I've seen a metallic sheet, just like the most common one that comes out is the metallic orb. I've seen orange orbs. To just recently, around uh, three weeks ago, there was a red orb that shot a uh, shot across the sky, way too fast for me to film it. Mm-hmm. Also, a week before that, I filmed a tube-shaped object that just also flew across the sky too fast for me to film it. But there, it's been a uh, I'd say around ten different kinds of UFOs that I've seen, and it just keeps changing with every time I film it. But the most common it would be the metallic orb that comes up. Well, with uh, with Dr. J's uh, interaction, and we've interviewed Dr. Stephen Greer, and he has uh, this knowledge as well, but his seem that they come in more of an orb-like fashion, right, Dr. J? Actually, no. When I was there at Contact in the Desert, I did everything from an arrowhead to a triangle to a large rectangle to a half moon to uh, orbs. I, I don't think there was any one more than the other than probably the arrowheads and the rectangle, the, the chevron-shaped looking ones. That I would have to say. So he, he, there's more of those than the orbs with regards to what he's doing, but I guess he's also getting and focusing a higher group and larger ships that are coming, mm. and they're coming at such a higher place. Like You can clearly tell they're way out of our atmosphere. They're not short craft looking down. It's uh, probably in the estimate of several miles long, some of them at least. Wow, what was oh. the audience reaction on the ground at the time? Was there uh, was it five hundred like- people, literally, from going from a quiet, meditative state with just Stephen Greer talking to everybody, ooing and wowing and pointing? It was a electrical experience for that matter. You know, even times when I wasn't paying attention, just to hear that from the people, the the energy that came. Everybody was clearly, even though they were preparing themselves, they were clearly surprised with what they were seeing. That's the impression I got, and that happened several times over the course of four hours. You know, what's interesting is we were uh, contacted by Mr. Reynolds Kamaka Vivioli, spiritual uh, leader right here in Hawaii, and he wanted us to give a message to everybody out there at the Joshua Tree at this event about a triangle formation showing up from a certain time from, I'm not exactly sure, from 8 to 11 in the evening over there. And uh, some apparently there was a triangular sighting right there. Correct, John? Absolutely, Blake. And, you know, the, the time frame that he gave was 100% accurate. They didn't start appearing till about 9.30, and they went on till about midnight. So he, they started during the time, he said, but they last on last song a little longer so yeah that was a fun that was the part because we as we were interviewing people throughout the day we were telling that message that you that he sent to the people here on location in california and for him to be right 
I think probably scared a few of those people. Absolutely fantastic. The third phase of moon connection is getting out. And, uh, you know, with the with the Internet, we could get this out to the people and have people be ready to have their eyes and cameras ready. And that's quite amazing with this November 10th summoning event coming up for the public to show up and uh, get the word out. Everybody, November 10th, again, where was is the exact place and uh, what time should everybody show up, uh, Fausto Perez? Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna be there around hopefully ten in the morning, uh get uh start meditating so I can get it started early. But if the public wants to come I'm gonna be there from around ten to ten to four ish, maybe five five ish. So anytime between then. All right, uh Eric Code two one two has a question. Yeah, yeah, Fasto is the same thing I was asking Dr. J. You're you're in LA. What happened out of yes. the airport? What what happened out of the airport today? Who was the guy? You know, we're not we're not on the scene. I'm back in East Coast, so I don't know what happened out there today. If you're in Los Angeles County, telling any it? news about who the guy was that went there and did what he did? Twenty three year old guy that had a note with his pocket that says we want to I wanna kill TSA agents. Okay, that's what they told us in the local media. Uh that I can't firsthand confirm anything because I didn't see the crime, obviously. But this is what's going around to the local media here, uh, from the local radio stations to the local uh, news stations, TV news stations. That's what I saw. What about you, Fosto? Jim? No, uh, that's the same thing I heard. I just read up on it on my uh, tablet right here uh, a little while ago. It said his name was Paul Clant- uh, Clancia. He's from Pennsylvania, uh, from Pennsylvania, and he... Uh, He's apparently been living in Los Angeles, and all it says here is that um, uh, his parents called the police on him for a suicide threat that he gave about a week ago, and from there, I guess today's when everything happened. Uh, wow. You know, it's really, uh, you know, the things are kind of going full circle. A lot of weird things going on right here, and, you know, a lot of these people – with these delusions, and they go and do these crazy things. They're he- like hearing voices. There's this people claim that they're having microwave energy uh, transmitted in their head, and voices are making them do this. And it seems like it's happening more and more every day. It's in the news. And uh, I know Dr. J has find that because a lot of uh, this alien abduction phenomenon, there is the same case side effects. There aren't at all, and that's the ironic part of it. But it also sees that the blackout, the media blackout, in the sense that they don't want to cover anything. And as we alluded to, we were speaking the other day, recall when there was some proof with Dr. Lear of these implants being removed, and you called KTLA, they didn't care. We're trying to get to the main media, giving them the hard facts, the solid evidence of Ellen implants removed from people that claim that they've been abducted but not only that the these objects are extraterrestrial in origin and with technology that didn't even exist until just a few years ago and these implants have been removed and they're over uh, 10 to 15 years old and the technology nanotube technology is a brand new technology and these uh, implants and ktla news basically didn't they didn't want anything to do with it, and uh, I don't understand why uh, they don't want to follow up with stories like that. With over 4 million people claim, claiming that they've had encounters with alien beings in the United States a year that uh, the main media doesn't pick up on that. Well, Third Phase of Moon is going to keep spreading the news and getting the word out. We're going to be taking calls from people around the world right now, and if you have any questions, the number to call in is 347-934-0378. Now to our next caller, Airy Code. Three two three. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Hi, Erico, this three is two Robert three. Welcome to Third Phase. Hello, you're live. Blake, it's Robert Bingham. Now we have the highlight of the show tonight. We're having a discussion with summoners right there in Los Angeles, California, that have learned the power. Scheduling a new summoning coming up on November 10th, and everybody wants to get the man himself right there who they learned how to do it from. Mr. Robert Bingham, welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Uh, thank you, Blake, for uh, having me on your show. 
Fausto Perez and uh, Jim Martin have any questions for our, for our guest, Robert Bingham, say hi to Robert Bingham. Hey, Robert. Glad to have you on the show with us. Hi, hey, Paul. Robert. Hey, Jim. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Okay. Uh, I, I wanted just to say that uh, my method of teaching has nothing to do with CE5. It's, uh, I don't want people to get confused out there because uh, that's what Stephen Greer teaches. I teach a whole different, uh, uh, to me, I do what I do. And, and uh, it is, I, I believe that if you want to see what I, how the method of teaching is, you have to go to uh, UFO Robert Bingham on YouTube. Uh, I believe uh, Blake has uh, some of it. I don't know. Um, and I go over the techniques on my on videos there, uh, especially one at the uh, Charlie Park in Malibu and uh, a few others. You know, we, we've been following Mr. Robert Bingham from the beginning. Day one, when he announced on Third Phase of Moon Live that he was going to do his event, we asked the people from around the world to show up and release the new documentary right there at Third Phase of the Moon about the man who summoned UFOs. And he has an absolutely great channel called UFO Robert Bingham right there on YouTube, and I suggest everybody to take a look at his channel and his continuous updates. I want to ask you, Robert Bingham, that, you know, Jim Martin, Fausto Perez, November 10th, are holding this event, and they would, you know, we'd all be honored for three summoners right there on location summon UFOs. Uh, sure, I, I, I drop by and, um, uh, sure, so why not? We have a, a great day and a lot of activity. So I say for all the people listening, if you do want to see, uh, real UFOs and real UFO activity, um, uh, show up. Wow. And, uh, where is it, where's it going to be located at? The, the summoning? I didn't catch that. Is it going to be at, uh, Park Plaza? Thank you, Robert, for coming to the event. That's going to be awesome. Um, it's going to be in Hollydale in Southgate, California. Um, I'm going to use my map app to find the location exactly. But this park is called Hollydale Park. It's located in, uh, in the city of Southgate, and it's right by the L.A. Riverbed. Um, we will be posting, when we put this radio show up on Third Phase of the Moon tomorrow, the exact location via Google Map, and so there's not going to be any uh, wondering where this location is. It's going to be November 10th, the Los Angeles area, and we'll be posting right here on third stage at Google. So it's all going to be taken care of. We also have Dr. Jandy Elias right here with us in third phase of moon. I'm sure he's excited to show up to an event with three summoners right there. This is going to be great. Dr. J? Of course it is. And, you know, Robert started an awesome revolution in that teaching people how to do it, because the key to disclosure is not persuading the president to come on TV and say, hey, they're here. It's for each and every person to take it to themselves, within themselves, to accept that we're being engaged and to initiate that contact. And I think that's going to be a great event, having the teacher and the students in one location doing the same thing. Well, thank wow, you, Jim, what do you, what do you think now that uh, you've learned this, we're going to do this public uh, event. It's going to happen on November 10th. Jim, we got you back. We got you back. So are you ready for this November 10th? I, I call it, a, you know, three summonings, the schedule, uh, 30 in the morning. Everybody should show up. And exactly where is this? We're getting chat, flash chat, so we might as well people are live right now. Let's get it out there. What, where is the exact location? Jim, go ahead. Uh, I don't know the location. That would be Fosto. Fosto, pull up that street it was on. But, um, well, the pull it easiest, up on your phone. Yeah, I have it right here on the map. So the name of the park is Hollydale Park. It's in the city of Southgate. The cross, the major cross streets that you can use to find it is uh, Gardendale and Garfield Avenue. And right on those cross streets, if you keep going straight down Gardendale, so there's a, so the Park three ends. The park's gonna be right there at the end. Anybody should be able to see it from that point. But if anybody can just type in Hollydale Park and Southgate, California on Google, the park will show up right away. I'm watching it right now on my uh, on my uh, Google Maps on my Surface app, Surface tablet. Now we're gonna be going to Mr. Robert Bingham, and uh, you know, 
what do you think now that you've been spreading the word around to the world and people are uh, getting this knowledge and they're really wanting to find out about whether we're alone in the earth or not, it must uh, it must be interesting that you've come out within a year and a half and now the world is watching and listening to you, Robert Bingham. Yes, like, uh, well, my analogy for that is that it's my mission to enlighten people to the fact that they, uh, are, they're they here and that they're capable of interacting with them and having their own personal relationship with them. But, but the real, and that's taught people around the world on the Internet how to do this. So a lot, I'm sure you're getting a lot of film from a lot of people. Um, but anyway, uh, what, I, what it is, it's like a, a stone. I, I consider myself a spear that's going out there and uh, when I started this. And, and, it, and the spear is, uh, and behind it, it just gets bigger and bigger because people start teaching each other. And, uh, and one day it, it enveloped the whole world, the whole planet, where everybody uh, is capable of doing this. And uh, they won't be frightened when the uh, terrestrials do come down here to help us uh, be better guardians of the planet and uh, and with better technology that, uh, you know, we won't be uh, subject to a lot of diseases that were created by men and viruses and so, so forth. And these atom bombs, uh, you know, nuclear weapons won't exist. Anymore. But uh, that's well, what it's the, all about. You know, with the world as it is, and, you know, sometimes it gets dark with the human being being, you know, kind of evil in this world. And, you know, what Robert Bingham, what you're doing is kind of you're opening a whole mind and thought process. And having having this kind of message is a positive thing, and it's definitely not negative. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure Jim Martin and Fausto Perez have uh, something to say on that. Go ahead, Jim Martin. Yeah, I would say that, um, well, one, Robert has been a great teacher uh, for myself and I'm sure for many people, including Fosto. I think the message is, is absolutely positive. Um, and certainly in the past few months since, since I've met him, it has absolutely changed my perspective. Um, and like I said, I'm just starting out, the amount of activity I've seen in the past five weeks alone, I would have never thought I would see in a lifetime, only maybe a few months ago. So... Uh, Robert is the real deal. He's been very generous in, in how he teaches his techniques, and um, I do think that it's the beginning of a, of a major revolution, um, and I think we're all very excited to be a part of it. Thank you. You know, uh, we're getting questions here right on the flash chat, and uh, one of the questions is, what kind of mood are you genu- genuinely in when uh, these U- UFOs are around you and the summoning is happening? Are, are you in a happy mood or are you what kind of mood what's your take on it what's what's the technique are you is this question for me Blake definitely uh, Robert Bingham Ed. okay um, well when I first started I, I naturally I got excited and it was a rush but over the years I've been doing this for 14 years now uh, it, uh, it, it, it it's normal for me to do that but I'm excited when uh, I'm able to present this to the people that go to these events. And I, I get excited because uh, they, the terrestrials show up and they do, I mean, they take their, you know, they spend a lot of effort and time to uh, awaken uh, people to the fact that they do exist and that they're there to help us. And uh, But, you know, there's a lot of, I believe, forces out there that are, are Trying to sort of fear uh, to the public that uh, uh, only because of the technology involved and they're making money off of it. You know that's that's how I feel. But uh, I do get really happy, uh, and uh, when I see that the, the dreams that are uh, and the mission that I have uh, start to manifest and they and, and they starting to spread, uh, and it's a good thing. It's not a it's not a bad thing. I mean. Uh, it's a great thing, I think. You know, I know it's a great thing. Uh, so we're on the, the tip of a new revolution, like uh, like Jim said. Are you there? 
Yeah, well, you know, I'm just thinking this event on November 10th, Los Angeles, Hollydale region, we're going to have the description right there below. Everybody take a look. It's going to happen at uh, everybody show up around 10, 30, 11 in the morning there at Hollydale Park, and it's going to be going down. And, uh, you know, I call it the triple summoning event, and I, I'm, I'm just getting truly excited about the the aspects, the oh. people that show up and what they're going to be capturing and what their cameras. Um, we're oh, yeah. unfortunately getting near the end of this radio show, so I want to give everybody some time to, you know, give up their last, you know, statements and what they think about this UFO summoning event coming up and uh, what's in store in the future. Dr. J. Andy Elias, go for it. Everyone, it's disclosure is in your hands. Go out and find a teacher. This is Robert. Learn to make contact. Accept that we are being engaged. Keep your eyes open and send your footage to the Third Phase of the Moon. And listen to Third Phase of the Moon Radio weekdays. The Thursdays, every 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at freedomslips.com. Thank you, Dr. Jandy Elias. Now, Eric code 212, go ahead. Hey, I just want to say Satellite of Love, Lou Reed, RIP. Okay, now we go to let's Alstow Perez. We're looking forward to the November 10th event. Uh, any last words for our Third Phase of Moon viewers? Oh, I'm looking very forward to it, and I would like to thank Robert for showing this to all of us so we can see the reality. Before this, I was like, most actually every American, you only believe what you see, but this has opened my mind to so much more. And before, uh, about the disclosure part, one thing I wanted to add is uh, I had a, my dad had a friend before who said he was part of some kind of club. He used to be a millionaire, owned a lot of hotels, and he folded up a $20 bill and told me, my sister, and my brother, if anybody can figure out what this is, uh, you can have the twenty dollar bill. And we were all excited. Three years later, nine eleven happens. We remember the shape on the twenty dollar bill, and it was, he was showing us the twin towers getting destroyed. There definitely is a movement out there just trying to suppress this, which is why uh, I love this mission of just exposing this to the world. If, if there is a suppression, they're not going to feature on any world news until we make this go viral. Until everybody demands for it to come on the news. So. I ask everybody to learn, to come and try to learn this. Uh, go out, do your events, show this to the world. I w would love to have events worldwide where somebody could just go down the street to a local park near them where somebody is offering to show people UFOs. That way this can finally get out there and people can see the impression we're really in. There's a lot of things that have been hidden. Mr. Fausto Perez, uh, thank you for joining us right here at Third Phase Moon. And like you said, with the $20 bill and uh, what happened, there was something that was written in hard ink through these, uh, this puzzle technique. It, uh, it, the writing was on the walls, and it was a precursor, absolutely, uh, you know, what the higher powers will do. We have no idea in what uh, extremes they'll get to. Mr. Jim Martin, go ahead. Thanks, Blake. I uh, just want to say uh, I appreciate you having me on tonight. Uh, everyone keep watching Third Phase of the Moon. Uh, and also uh, thank you to, to Robert and, and Fausto for their time this, uh, this evening. I would say check out um, Robert's uh, YouTube channel, Robert Bingham UFO, um, for all kinds of upcoming uh, videos and tips on summoning. And we'll certainly be looking forward to uh, joining Fausto um, for his, uh, the upcoming event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim, and uh, we really can't wait. This is going to be uh, something historical and brand new for the world, never before seen, thanks to the man himself, Mr. Robert Bingham. Robert Bingham, any last words for our viewers right here at Third Phase? Yes, I'd like to thank you, Blake, for having me, invited me on the show, and thank you, Jim, and, and uh, thank you, John and, and Fossil. And, uh, yeah, uh, if you do want to see beautiful uh, in activity, uh, and that this is real, and to wake up that you know we, it is real. Uh, show up at the event at uh, Holiday Park in uh, I believe Southgate. And Blake, uh, thank you so much for having me again. And uh, I'm really, uh, really grateful for all you've done for me and the UFO community. Thank you, Mr. Robert Bingham, Holiday Park, Southgate, November 10th. Be there 10.30 in the morning for the triple summoning event of a lifetime. It's been an incredible show, and uh, we just look forward to what's going to be happening here in the future right here at Third Phase of Moon, getting the word out. 
And if you've captured anything amazing in regards to UFOs, you could contact Third Phase Moon via Skype or Facebook. My name's Blake Cousins. Keep your eyes on the skies, and we'll see everybody again next time.